Preston. I am the president of the Great South Atlantic Conference, headquarters in Decatur, Georgia. If you're ever in the area, drop in and see us. This morning I have a few words of wisdom for all of those who have bared the cross in the heat of the day. I am convinced beyond the shadow of a doubt it is upon your shoulders that we now stand. And so let me share with you for the next few moments a, a little manna from heaven. I'm looking at the book of Deuteronomy chapter 32 and verse 7. I'm reading from the Message Bible. It says, remember the days of long ago. Remember the days of long ago. Ask your father and the elders or the aged men. They'll tell you all about it. What is going on in Deuteronomy chapter 32? Israel, God's chosen people, God's special people, had become corrupt. They, 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 they had become crooked and twisted. They got into the place where they were unthankful. They were dealing with God as if God uh, was their enemy. They were living a corrupt life. They were acting in foolish and unwise manner. And so in our setting today, God wants to remind them. And so he says to them, remember, how are you going to do it, God? How are you going to bring these people around? He said, uh, uh, remember the days of long ago. Go talk to the father, your father and, and, and the aged men. In this verse, there are three great lessons for every person who's on the retirement plan. Let me break the three lessons down real quickly. The first lesson is that because of who you are and because of where you are, my generation and the generation after me need to hear your story. See, I, I'm convinced beyond the shadow of a doubt that you, 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 you can't be in the work of the living God and not have a story. You have a story to tell, point one. Point two, you must tell that story. The problem with Israel back in the book of Judges was that, listen, after the death of Joshua, after the death of the elders, the people forgot. See, when you do not repeat the story, something happens. I, I was taught at Oakwood, repetition deepens the impression. The more you tell the story, the more the story is driven home. And because you might fail to tell your story, because you think, well, my story is not that great. My story is not that important. Yes, it is. And our generation and the next generation and the generation after that need to hear you tell the story of how good God has been to you. Tell the story. The third point is not only you have a story. And the second point was that you must tell your story. Listen to this. If God told them to go to the elders, to the older ones, then there must be life changing powers in the story. Something will happen to a person if you tell the story. See, my Christian friends, if you tell how God has kept us. This, this, our, 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 our people have a story to tell. Our grandparents, how our grandparents who had little education was able to deal with racism, was able to deal with the KKKs, was able to deal with being the last hired and the first fired. But yet today you can symbolically hear them singing from the grave. How did you make it? We've come this far by faith. And every time a person, a person, hear you tell your story, something is stirred on the inside. Every time you tell the story that God gave us a man who had a dream, and, and, and every time you hear the dream, it, it, it doesn't just inspire a nation. It has inspired the world. 
we got a story to tell. And every time we tell it, something happens. You've got to tell them how we started out with 17,000 as a membership, but we've multiplied that thing 16 times by the grace of God. We have a story to tell. We have a story to tell how we made bricks without straws in evangelism. You've got to tell the story of E.E. E. Cleveland and J. Malcolm Phipps and C.D. Brooks and C.B. Rock and E.C. War. You've got a story to tell how we took a former slave plantation and then turned it into a university. Listen, my Christian friends, you've got a story to tell. Tell the story. God said to Israel, go talk to your fathers and go talk to the old men. They'll tell you how great I am. And if you tell your story, the world will never be the same again. You've got a story to tell the next generation that we have nothing to fear for the future except we forget how God has led us in the past. My friends, those who have retired, never forget you have a story. Never forget you must tell your story and remember when you tell that story, lives are changed. May God bless you and keep you is my prayer. Amen.
abiding there will i hide till life's trials are over shelter protected no evil can harm me resting in jesus i'm safe evermore
fellow segments and I just want to take a little bit of time and talk to you about a subject that we don't like to discuss. It's about managing our property and managing our affairs. Because you know, there'll come a time when we'll be we'll find ourselves in situations where we cannot manage our property. We cannot manage our time. We cannot manage our talent. Those are the three things that we God has set us up as managers to manage because he owns everything and he's gifted us everything. But he's shared those things with us in order that we might be partners with him in the furtherance of his kingdom. So he's blessed us with things that over the years we've been able to accumulate and we've used for our own good and also for the furtherance of the kingdom. But I want to talk to you about managing things while you can. We shouldn't regret growing older. It's a privilege denied to many people. But we should be happy and joyful and peaceful in our later years. But there are some things that we need to do in order that we might be able to manage while we're still alive and that these things we will have provided for the management of the things that the Lord has blessed us with even after we pass on. I just want to do a quick disclaimer this information provided on this presentation does not, and it's not intended to constitute legal advice. Instead, all the information and content, they're for general informa information. It's general information for you to think about and motivate you to make preparation for times when you cannot manage your own property, your own time, your own talent. So the information may not be up to date legally for you where, for the locality where you are, but it's being presented so that, as I said, to motivate you to action. I would also like to encourage you to contact your own attorney and obtain legal advice for your unique situation. And then also just remember that the information that I'm presenting here does not create an attorney-client relationship between me and those of you who listen to this particular presentation. So Jesus talked much about managing resources and property. 16, I'm told 16 of the 38 parables were concerned with how to handle money and possessions. So, it was important to Christ that we learn how to be good stewards, both in life and in death. So, what are your values? Because how we handle our property 
on how we handle the gifts that the Lord has given us. Depends on how much we value certain things. So let's look at it from a secular standpoint and a spiritual standpoint. The secular, the spiritual. The secular is perishable. The spiritual is infinite. The sexual, secular is self-centered. The spiritual is Christ-centered. The secular is about the body. The spiritual is about the spirit. The secular is about short-term and pleasing ourselves in the moment. But the spiritual is about the long term, eternity, making decisions for eternity. And then the secular is about the body, how I feel, what I, what, what I want to do, how I feel at the given moment, how my body functions. But the spiritual is about the spirit. So... The secular is about the short term, and then the spiritual is about the long term, as I said, looking about and thinking about the future. And then last, self-control. The secular is about me controlling everything and me doing exactly what I want to do. But the spiritual is about this Holy Spirit controlling the decisions we make and how we govern and how we manage. So how can I manage what God has provided even when I won't, no longer can manage it and I may have to get somebody else to help me? What do I do? Well, you need to prepare now for when you no longer can manage. You've got to learn to trust someone because there will come a time in our lives when we'll need help from someone. And so we've got to learn to trust somebody because illness may come, physical, mental illness, disability. Some of us will be just plain old tired and won't feel like managing. And then some of us will be unavailable to manage. And some of us will be financially disabled where we can't manage. So how do we manage for life and death? Choose managers, as I said, who can manage for you wisely and in your best interest. But managers you must choose. You gotta, as I said, you gotta learn to trust someone. This, this is the time in your life, our latter years, when you have to trust someone to manage for you in life and in death. So, how do we manage for life and death? I'm encouraging you to set up a power of attorney for property and finance. That power of attorney, that gives, shares the management of your property, your money, your whatever you own. That gives you a chance to put it in a document and that person can help you to manage while you're still alive. Because fine, there will be a time that will come where you may not be able to manage. Let's go back. You could be sick, you could be disabled, or you could be financially disabled, or you can't manage. And so you want someone to be able to take care of your affairs while you're incapacitated. So you need to set up a power of attorney. And I'll give you an example. Um, I, when a husband leaves the country sometimes and their business to take care of, if there's something in his name, he can sign a document saying that his wife can handle his affairs while he's alive, while he's unavailable and can't do it. And then get another signature on your bank account. If, they're, if you're the only signator on your bank account, then nobody can touch it except you. And there are going to be times when you won't be able to access it. So get a signature or somebody gets another signature on your bank account. 
someone you can trust. Create a will for the management of your property, your assets, for when you pass on. And in that will will be an executor, somebody who you trust, who will carry out your best interest, will be named as this, this executor to handle your affairs. And then a trust. A trust has a trustee. And that trust can go into effect even before you pass on. And that person can, some usually a trust comes with certain conditions. You should also appoint your estate executor, take actions in life that will reduce the need for going to court. It shouldn't be necessary to go to court because that can slow the process down of distribution and managing your affairs. Eliminate your debt. Increase your assets. Get out of debt. In your senior years, there's no time to be caught up in a lot of debt. So make plans that reduce your conflicts or conflicts between the people who are managing, the people who are receiving your assets or receiving your property. Don't set it up where you're going to cause conflict. That's not pleasing to the Lord, and it's not representative of the life you've lived as a Christian. So when you're making your plans, you're making your power of attorney, your will, or your trust, try to eliminate and, and it, the process of providing for people that will cause conflict. Set up a power of attorney for health care decisions. Do you want life-sustaining treatment or you don't want any life-sustaining treatment when you're ill? Do you want to have life support method mechanisms set up? How do you want to do that? How do you do you want a nursing home? Preferences for emergencies and your in, incapacity. You need to set that up. And create a plan to finance long-term care in case you need it. And make a plan for financing illness. Name a guardian and out loud a plan for any minor children. But you say, Miss Spillett, minor children, if I'm a senior? Yes. You may end up being the guardian or the custodian of, of your grandchildren or somebody else's children. So make sure... If that's the case, you outline a plan for any minor children that you may be in charge of. Protect and provide for care for family members who may have special needs or disability. So make provision for them. Remember the kingdom of God in your assets, just like you paid tithe and offerings during your life. Remember the kingdom of God and the furtherance of, of, of his kingdom and, and be fair, you cannot do that. So make some provisions. Be charitable in sickness and in death. Share with those that are in need or share with some particular charity that has been beneficial to you. Share with our schools. Our schools could always use scholarship and could use an certain endowments or or be named in your will. Whomever you desire to receive something when you're unable to give, make sure you document that. For instance, if you're if you have a spouse, you might want to consider think about what if my spouse remarries after I'm gone? And do I want my children to share in the estate if I leave all to my spouse? Will my spouse be in a position where he can make sure, ensure that my children are provided for? Those are things you need to think about. Plan and make known your death arrangements. Do you want to be cremated? Do you want a memorial service? Do you want a funeral? How long do you want that to be? Do you want so who do you want to preach that funeral? Where do you want, do you want your body shipped back somewhere? All of that needs to be provided for. Create a will and a trust. 
a point of state executor. Pass your money and property to your beneficiaries as soon as possible. The older you get, the less you should own. Because there come time, if there come a time where you have to go to a nursing home or a long-term care facility for whatever reason, I think they check back to see if you have any assets. And they're not going to pay if you have assets that can pay for yourself. So you might want to reduce the amount of ownership that you have. But just make sure that you put in charge of your property someone you can trust. Be faithful for the end. Those who are faithful stewards of the Lord's means will know just how their business stands. And likewise, according to the servant of the Lord, they will be prepared for any emergency. She goes on to say, they should arrange their property in such a manner that they may leave it at any time and someone will be able to take it over and carry out your wishes. And then the Bible talks about it for us to be faithful to the end. Fear none of those things which you shall suffer. So don't fear any suffering. Don't fear anything that, that will come about. Be faithful unto death by managing your affairs, by making provisions for someone to manage your affairs. So that's being faithful unto death. And God promises us that he will give us a crown of life. Lord, I pray for the listeners of this presentation that they will be faithful unto death and they will manage the, the resources, the assets, the property that you've given to them, and that they will manage to the extent that your kingdom will be glorified. And I pray this in Jesus' name, and I thank you. Amen.